Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank him for his goodness. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name, Lord God. We honor you. We thank you for all that you do in our midst, in our lives. We pray that you lead us, that you speak unto us, that you guide us, that you transform us, that you mold us. That you take the things, Lord God, that is in us, Lord God, and that you bring them, Lord God, before you, Lord God. So we may be transformed. We may be, Lord God, spotless. We may be blameless, Lord God, stainless. For you say that you are coming to present us, Lord God, as blameless, Lord God. As your bride, Lord God. So, Lord, I pray for each one of us. I pray, Lord God, that you will touch our lives. You will touch our lives, Lord God, right there where we have the most need, Lord God. In the places, in the areas, Lord God, where we are struggling, Lord God, I pray that you touch us, Lord God, that you strengthen us, Lord Jesus. For you say it to your servant Paul, that in your weakness, in your weakness, my grace is sufficient for you. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that more than enough, your grace will be for each one of us. Your grace will be for your children. Your grace will be, Lord God, for your church. Your grace will be, Lord God, for the people that you have called by your name. The people, Lord God, that you have called by your name. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit, Lord God, that is true. Your spirit that is true will cause, Lord God, your children, Lord God, to recognize your presence. To recognize who you are. To recognize your power. To recognize your word. To recognize your name. To recognize, Lord God, everything that you have done. And that you do so lord god our memory be saturated lord god with the memory of you our heart be saturated lord god with the love of you our mind be saturated lord god with the mind of you with the memory of and then the thought of our hearts lord god the thought of our mind lord god be centered on you lord jesus so we honor you for all that you do have your way in our midst have your way lord god in our very midst lord god and do as you please for we surrender unto you. We want to see you, God. We want to see you in a way, Lord God, that we have yet to see be. We have yet to see. Lord God, we want to see you. We want, Lord God, to experience you in a way that we have yet to experience you. So I pray thee, I pray thee for the honor of your name, for the sake of your name, for the praise of your name. For the glory of your name, I pray thee, Lord God, manifest thyself, Lord Jesus. For you have said, Lord God, I will manifest myself unto thee. So, Lord, I pray thee that you manifest thyself again. That you manifest thyself again. That you manifest thyself again. That you manifest thyself again, Lord God. Take away, Lord God, the stones. Take away, Lord God, the stones. The things, Lord God, that prevent us, Lord God, to enter into the place of thy glory. The things that prevent us, Lord God, to touch. Lord God, into the things of thy glory. I pray thee, Lord Jesus, that you will shift us. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that you will shift us. I pray, Lord God, that from within us, you will shift us. I pray, Lord God, that from deep within us, you will shift us. I bless your holy name for you are true. I bless your holy name for you are faithful. You say that even when we are unfaithful, you remain faithful. So Lord God, I thank you for your faithfulness towards us. I thank you for your faithfulness towards each of all your children. I thank you for your goodness towards us. I thank you for your goodness, Lord God, towards our families. I thank you for your goodness, Lord God, to our homes. Thank you for your goodness, Lord God, towards our spouses. Thank you for your goodness towards, Lord God, our children, our parents, our siblings. Thank you for your goodness, Lord God, even towards our adversaries, Lord God. So they may come to know who you are, Lord God. They may come, Lord God, to the knowledge of who you are, Lord Jesus. So they may receive from you, Lord God, a satisfaction in this life, Lord God. Peace in this life, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord God, that you turn around, Lord God, the life of many, that you call them, Lord God, to open up their heart, Lord God, that the Lord, you draw them unto you, Lord Jesus, that you draw them unto you, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you will make it, Lord God, be. You will make the shift be, Lord Jesus. You will make the shift be. You will make the shift be so the spirit of those who are still struggling, we abandon the ways 
Jesus and come to your way. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for you are faithful in all you do. For we declare our everlasting love unto thee. We say our everlasting love unto thee. We are speaking our everlasting love unto thee. We are saying it, Lord, louder, Lord, and louder and louder, Lord Jesus, because you are faithful, Lord God, because you are through, you are worthy. You are worthy to receive, Lord God, all the praise and the glory. You are worthy to receive, Lord God, all the praise and the adoration. Receive, Lord God, my meditation this morning. Receive, Lord God, the words of my mouth this day. I pray thee, Lord God, that they be acceptable in thy sight, oh Lord Jesus. So there be, Lord God, as a sweet and sense of sweet flavor before thy throne, Lord God. And cause us to go, Lord, and to run before the throne of thy grace unto, Lord God, the place of thy glory, Lord God. Unto the court of thy presence, Lord Jesus. I ask you and I pray you, Lord God, that you touch each and every one of us to the dimension of your glory, God. So, Lord God, the things inside of us that is causing us and, and, and shackling and chaining us, Lord God, that is causing us, Lord God, to be bound, Lord God, that is causing us, Lord God, to be behind those things, be broken once and for all. I thank you, Lord God, that you are uprooting, Lord God, every plant that you haven't planted in us, that you are uprooting every plant that you haven't planted in us, every see that the enemy, Lord God, at each every way, Lord God, at each every time, Lord God, throughout our lives, Lord God, from the conception, Lord God, in the womb of our mother to this very day, every seed and every plant that you haven't planted, oh Lord Jesus, I pray thee uproot them and let it be, Lord God, a field, Lord God, that is acceptable by ye, acceptable by you, Lord God, a field, Lord God, that is ready to be planted with your seed and to let it bring forth fruit, Lord God. Falls of fruit, Lord God. Hundred falls and sixty falls and thirty falls and the falls of fruit, Lord God. I pray thee, Lord Jesus, touch each one of us. Touch each one of us. And have mercy on us. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. There was a man in the word of God who needed healing. He needed a deliverance. He called. He was a blind man. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He could not see. He could not see. You may not see what God is doing in your life. You may not see who God is. But you have a voice. And all he's asking is not that you see. But that you call on him. Jesus. Son of David. Have mercy. On me. And the Lord came and he asked, can you, can you pull me to the first place? By the simple fact that you call unto the Lord Jesus, the word of God says that he heareth. Amen? He heareth and he listen. And because he heareth and he listen, that truth and that certainty is what causes you and I to keep on calling on him. Hallelujah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Let's take the book of Luke. We got a book of Luke chapter 18. We're going to read on the screen, please. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 18, we start from verse 33. Luke chapter 13. 18. 18. Yes. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 18. Chapter 18, mm -hmm. verse 33. Mm -hmm. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. 38. 
Uh, where, where you at? Luke chapter 18, right? Verse 38. Mm -hmm. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse Read from verse 35. 35. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh into Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. Verse 38. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought, to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight. Let's read again. Verse 35. Verse 35, and it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. Uh, people of God, just look, look at this verse. The man was just sitting in the place begging. He was not praying. He was not seeking God. All he was doing was his natural stuff, begging. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he heard a multitude. And all he did, he asked, what's going on? He asked a question. What is going on? And that told him that there is somebody passing by. He took him how long? To get his sight. Immediately. Are you, are you, meaning, he did not need three years of a training in Bible study and Bible college to get an answer. Are you what I'm saying? The Bible says that faith comes from. So how you hear is how you have the result. Because the man heard. And then he says, what's going on? They say, ah, there is a man called Jesus Christ passing by. Who is he? And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see, all, 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 all it did, all it did was, how many words? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. A simple phrase, but that was loaded with faith. A faith that was born in the instant. And in the immediate where he were, he was still blind. He was still begging. But now he turned his begging from men to begging God. All he needed was to hear the right word. Because in him, there was already abilities. There was already talent and gift that needed to be stirred up but now he needed to see and hear and speak to the right person when they gave him the information he didn't wait 
as we usually say, he didn't go to pray about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right there, he knew the train was passing by. He ain't going to wait. Say to somebody, don't wait. Don't wait. Listen. For him, that was the place of his quote-unquote church. Are you what I'm saying? Because that was an assembly of people with Christ among them. And right there, he came begging and blind. Are you what I'm saying? When I say I shall not go the same way I came, it has to be true. Because he came begging and blind. And they told him, there is a man passing by. Now he starts screaming, Jesus. He didn't ask. <laughs> he, he screamed, cried. Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Verse 39. Verse 39. And they which went before rebuked him. That he should hold his peace. Are you what I'm saying? Amen. That's, that's, that's typical church. <laughs> so I'm saying, the Lord is visiting you. And then as he's visiting you, you may manifest a joy or a uh, trance. And then the Pharisee of the church will be like, shh. <laughs> Hallelujah. They do not understand. That there is something ongoing. Whether it is a transformation, deliverance, restoration, healing, whatever that is. At that time, Jesus is doing something. So the people around who don't understand that we just say, Shh, be quiet. I bet you that if some of the pastors we have today were there, and the guy was screaming like that, you will be turning. In the name of Jesus, I cast out this demon. I created this demon. The guy was not having demon. He was having problem with blindness. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are certain sicknesses that the word of God says, indeed, they are taught, uh, uh, sorry, tied to um, uh, a demonic issue. Hallelujah. But not all of them. So the key is to recognize, discern what is the case of the brother over here. And he said, they said, that which went before him rebuked him that he should hold his peace. Why do you want me to have peace when the one who can give me sight is around? Why? Which type of peace are you talking about? Because that's not the peace of the Lord. Hallelujah. I cannot be quiet when there is something in my life that is bothering me. Are you what I'm saying? The, oh, the Bible says, e Jesus Christ. There was a lady called Anna. Amen. She was the mother of Samuel. She did not have a child. And she begged the Lord. And the Bible says she would go to the temple and pray and pray and pray and pray and ask the Lord. And as she was praying, 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 sometime will come that she will now murmur. Uh, uh, can we say that? No murmur. Uh, uh, groan. Okay. And then a mouth would be now moving. So the, the word of God said there was a, the, the prophet at the time, uh, Eli. He saw her. He thought he, she was drunk. And he rebuked her. Say, hey, you drunk over there. Stop your thing. And she told him, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm, I'm not drunk. <laughs> I'm here for a reason. I'm, I'm here for. Listen. She was there for a reason. She got answer. Even the beggar, he was there for a reason. His reason was to beg. But when he saw. Who he has to beg for, he got answer. Which reason brings you in the 
be in the feet of Christ. Are you what I'm saying? If you carry yourself, you go to church just because you have to check your clock, you will go back the same way you came. Are you what I'm saying? If you come to the presence of God, the, the, just to, to do check mark, you, you, sometimes you, you go to work, you don't want to go. Are you what I'm saying? But if you don't go, also you don't have your paycheck. So what you do is you, you arrive and you just check. You know, in Africa, some people in the administration who work for the government, they go to work, they enter the office, they start working around 8 a.m. They're in the office. They ate at what? 4 p.m. The only work they did was two paper. They every... Am, am I lying? Many of them, they are sitting in the office that do nothing. But they know they have to check in there. <laughs> they know they have to check in. They go with purpose. Their purpose is that they must check in so that we have the pay. What's your purpose? What's your checking? When you come in the presence of God, what are you coming for? Because you see, blessing is not random. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will not sit and blessing will turn, 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 turn and miss somebody and fall on you. Uh-uh, he ain't working this way. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you got to be intentional. You got to be intentional. Lord, I'm going today. Anna, she has her own house. She could pray in her house. Amen. But she went into a place that was set by the Lord to be the place of his presence. Does it mean that God is not everywhere? You have to have a revelation. Hallelujah. The reason why God says, be in the assembly, and this is there that he manifests his blessing, it does not mean that alone in your room he cannot manifest a blessing. But there is a secret to unlock certain things that you need to understand in order to receive them. Are you what I'm saying? Because God, who is everywhere, will tell you, I want you to be there. There is purpose. But when you come, your heart must come with a, with, with today. I'm going, whatever I'll do and I will do, Lord, I must not come out. Because let me tell you, Every day of your life, there is something you need. Not every day. Every second of your life, there is something you need. Started with breath. Hallelujah. Because the breath that you have is not free. You don't know you have breath that is important until you start choking. And then you... <laughs> but when you just breathe... You don't realize how important it is. When you take your hand and you put your spoon in your food and you put it in your mouth, you think this is just because you can do it. Ask some people, they cannot even lift their finger. So there is something you need from the Lord every second. Of your life as long as you have a heartbeat there is something you need now in all those needs there is something specific that as you need in a sense of transformation restoration deliverance healing the word of god says you should come with expectation If you just go to clock out, or I mean clock in, you will clock out like you clocked in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because God, in this word here, says as he starts speaking, the Bible says they rebuked him then that he should hold his peace. But what is it? 
But he he cried so much the more. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody Lord, somebody say Lord teach me. <laughs> The reason why you don't get some of the answer you're seeking for is because you, you, you pray with fashion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This guy, he didn't pray with fashion. Some people, they go, Oh, Lord, you know, I am just uh, your son. I would have to have uh, something from you. No! No! The guy needs something. Jesus! <laughs> He needs something. And they try to tell him, don't pray this way. What you say? Jesus! <laughs> Let me tell you something. Sometimes there are devils that makes you quiet. Do you know that? The Bible said there was a man who was in the synagogue. And Jesus came. When he arrived in that synagogue, suddenly the men started what? Manifesting. And the demon was now activated. But that same man went in the same synagogue for how many years? But that demon was quiet. <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? That demon was quiet. He was among the synagogue again. <laughs> Worshipping God. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are a demon that is called a spirit of dumbness that makes you be quiet. Somebody say, God, teach me. Because when you need to scream for God to see you, hear you, it's not the time to be quiet. But he cried out, so much the more. Oh. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And what happened? And Jesus stood and commanded him to be this is brought me, What it means is that the Lord was going. And then went, he stood. He stayed still. I hear what I'm saying. He, he stopped everything. To listen to one. But the word of God said that but the word of God said when only one is out, he stopped everything with the 99. Just for the one. Say, Lord, I am the one. I, I am the one. I am the one. I can no longer go the same as I come simply because some people around are telling me, watch your peace. Which peace? I have a need that God only can fulfill. So if I don't scream on him and I must do as people like, huh, sometimes you find yourself praying like people like. Are you what I'm saying? That's why you have to have inside of you a deep desire to be unusual. For we are unusual beings. Meaning, what everybody does, if God speaks to you to say otherwise, to do otherwise, you cannot refrain. Because of the fear of people. Hallelujah. We cannot refrain because of the fear of people. God does unusual things. He started with the, the people of uh, Israel. He got them the manna. He was so unusual, they say what? What is this? <laughs> manna. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word of God said in the book of Israel, uh, 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 Isaiah that he does new things that you should not know, that you don't know. He does things unusual. Things that goes beyond the reasoning of man. Men will believe that a king cannot die on a cross. For the word of God said that the foolishness of God 
his wisdom unto this world. He does thing unusual. He see a blind man and he spit on the floor. And he take that spit. Somebody say, Pastor, give me your spit. <laughs> you see? <laughs> You see, you people are a little fit. <laughs> are you afraid of COVID? <laughs> Hallelujah. He's unusual. Let's go back. Verse 40. Verse 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, Saying, what will thou that I should do unto thee? You see, there is a difference between this one and the one that was at the pool of Bethesda. The one at the pool of Bethesda, when the Lord asked him, what do you want me to do? He starts saying, hey, when I come here, nobody help me. When I again, when I arrive, he starts telling all his problems. <laughs> but this one, he got a revelation. The question was, what do you want me to do for you? So if you yourself, you don't have already an expectation, that's when you will start now doing all your litany of your problem. By the time you finish, God has already taken his plane. <laughs> so saying, what wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? He said what? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Uh, 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 amen. Specific and specifications. You know, when we build things like electronic or stuff like that, you have to put the specifications. They're called the technical specification. You have to specify, Lord, this is my need. This is what I'm asking you to do. For when he says, what do you want me to do for you? Do you believe that uh, Jesus did not know? He knew. He knew more than even know. But for you, you must be able and you must understand that when you pray and you say, Lord, give me this. And it comes, then you know he answered you because blessing is not random. The Bible says, There was a man who was a judge, and he was a wicked judge. And there was a woman. She went begging that wicked judge continually. But she was begging on what? On one thing. Are you what I'm saying? She knew what type of relief she needed from that wicked judge. And she banged on it until the Bible, the, even the wicked judge, finally gave up. He said, I must give her what she asked for. You, you pray until you receive. You cannot pray, and when you don't receive, and then you just by discouragement say, okay, let's do the, 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 the will of the Lord be done. But the problem is that you don't even know the will of God. You see what I'm saying? Because as I say all, often time, we do not have to say, let your will be done just by random kind of like uh, words. No. For instance, when Christ was in the, where? Uh, at Gethsemane, the Bible said that uh, he said, but not my will, but your will be done. Did he know the will? Amen. So he know exactly what was the will. So when he says, but your will be done, it was with clarity. Let me give you an example. I gave oftentimes this by saying there is a man looking for a girl to marry. And then there are two girls. Both of them are excellent. Beautiful. But he does not know which one is his wife. I mean his future wife. So he start praying, oh Lord, lead me. 
And he takes his horse, and he is now riding the horse. And the first girl is on the right, the other one is on the left. And then he's going, Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. And by the time he arrived at the crossroad, whether to take the right or the left, he pulled a little bit on the... <laughs> he pulled a, a little bit, and he said, oh, Lord, let your will be done. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He, he manufactured his own will <laughs> in the name of the Lord. So often time, we need to be assured to know, to understand the will of God. The will of the Lord is not complicated. It's not abstract. It is over here. It's not complicated. When I was younger, in the faith, and I heard people saying, you must do the will of God. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> what does it mean? In those days, <coughs> the father of the, uh, in the church, in the faith, they were always using the word of God with mystery. They, 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 they were doing like it is only them who has a revelation. So when they talk, they talk about things you don't understand what they're talking about. They could not break down to let you know exactly what it is. So you will be kind of like a... I want to do the will of God. Oh, Lord, let me know your will. So you start praying. Oh, Lord, let me know your will. Let, let me know your will. But you don't look into the, into the will. Are you know what I'm saying? So no wonder as you pray, you pray, you pray, you are still praying, not receiving what you pray for because you are praying a... Amen? He gave us his will. For every situation of our life, there is a written will. For sickness, for poverty, for children, for wife, for husband, for life, for peace, for joy. There is a written will. And as we are now knowing, Lord, I need from you this do, do, what, we, what you needed from the Lord, what you want from the Lord, is that something he's able to do? If the answer is yes, it means the will of God for you is clear. You have to pong on it until you receive it. Does, does it make sense? You cannot simply be like this. You pray, oh Lord, give me... And because you don't see the manifestation, the spirit of discouragement enters in. And you say, okay, Lord, let your will be done. No. Mm -mm. If you certainly know the will of the Lord concerning your matter, like Paul. Paul did not pray once when he had a thorn in his flesh. The Bible says he prayed how many times? Three times. So do you think that uh, he came, oh Lord, remove the thorn in his flesh, let your will be done? No. No. For he was consistent until he heard the Lord telling him, on this one, my will is not to grant you. You know what I'm saying? Then at that time, you know, this is the will of God. I must now follow it and go with that. But you cannot simply let the devil hit you with doubt. And then you call your doubt the will of God. Are you know what I'm saying? So, and Jesus said unto him, what? Receive thy sight, mm. that thy faith hath saved thee. Oh, Lord Jesus. You know, some of the word in the word of God, the way it speaks, it speaks by putting in your hands the power to receive. And yet, you have no power yourself, right? We have no power. But sometimes the Lord speaks in a way where he said, I deposited in your hand the power to receive. And he says, your faith has saved thee. Which type of faith did he have? A faith that did not care about what people were complaining of or about. A faith that did not care about his physical status. A faith that did not care about whether people are going to say or not. A faith that did not care of nothing but to receive from the Lord. 
Look, sometimes women can go to church and they have wigs. And now they arrive, and because they have the wigs, if they pray and then they fall, the wigs will come out. And, <laughs> and if it comes out, the brother who were looking on her to certainly ask her in marriage, he will say, certainly, that's not my wife. <laughs> so at the end of the day, many people, we wanted to reserve themselves. They, they, they fight the move of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? They fight the move of the spirit. Some of them, they can be sitting. And inside of them, they're like the disciple of Emmaus. To, to Emmaus. They, they, they can feel in their heart that the Lord is moving something inside. But, but they're like, But the man, when he heard, at the time the Lord was working in him through hearing, the Bible said he cried out because he had a need. He identified his need. And when he identified the provider of that need, he didn't sit still. Even when people tried to get him to be still, he said there are times when you can sit. There are times you cannot sit. And he found out that that time was not a time to sit and look. It was a time to cry and scream. He could not see, but he could speak. And if you can see and speak what is preventing you, hallelujah, if you can see and speak what is preventing you, And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Receive thy sight. Now, if somebody understands this word, then you have received that word today. Because this word is not a, is not, is not an, is not a history. Hallelujah. This word is what the word of God says it is spirit and life. So this word. Is spirit and life. He worketh all time. Everywhere. Anywhere. What is the sight that you need to receive? I oftentimes share with you, telling you that I have received answers and answers and answers and miracles through God, by God, by the word. As I was asking him, Lord, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. I open the word, I'll go, I read, and the word jump on me. And I know he spoke. And when you know he spoke, you can see the manifestation of that word in your life with palpable results. And at that point, you know that the God that you pray is a real God. So the day when you don't receive, you have only two reasons for why you don't receive. You pray amiss or he clearly told you it's not the time. But if you know you pray in the will of God and you don't see it, you must now put yourself as Daniel. Because there is some forces in the realm that are fighting against the fulfillment of your prayer. So you can no longer now sit. Imagine that Daniel was not receiving the answer. He said, okay, Lord, Lord let that will be done. We use often time cliche words. Are you what I'm saying? Cliche words. But it doesn't work like that. Daniel understood that he had to press in. He had to press in. And as he pressed in, he saw the result of God coming in the form of assistance from the angels. And the assistance of the angels were not only for there. To this day, they still assist. Hallelujah. Nobody can say the contrary because in the word of God, in the book of uh, uh, the New Testament, um, uh, Acts of uh, Apostles. So we're talking after, after grace, after 
the Holy Spirit after the resurrection of, of Christ, we do see that the angels came and assisted the disciple. Hallelujah. It was not once, it was not twice. They assisted literally the disciple. There was a Philip who was preaching. And then the Bible said that an angel came to assist him to take him where? To the Enoch. You feel what I'm saying? So, the angels that God has assigned from the time of Genesis to now, they are still functioning towards our good. You may not understand it or know it, but it does not negate the reality of the word. And some of the tools of your warfare may not be known simply by lack, eventually, of that knowledge. But when God is opening your mind and your spirit to understand the works of the angels in your life, they are to assist you. So you pray. You pray. You enter warfare. And as you enter warfare, like Daniel, the Bible says they do come and fight along you. We do see, we do see that sometimes the angel will come and the way they fight, they will do noise against the enemy. When the enemy was coming and camping against the nation of Israel, that we do noise, and the enemy we hear the noise, and that we think it is a great army coming against them, and that we start killing themselves <laughs> or running. Verse forty-three. Go ahead. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. Immediately he received his sight. First thing, when God bless you. You know it is God because it brings you directly to him. If you got a job and the job takes you away from God, got it. Are you what I'm saying? If you have businesses that takes you away from God, got it. Because the Bible says it is the blessings of the Lord that make it one rich and he added no sorrows unto it. He's blind. He knows that his uh, sight did not come from medicine. Hallelujah. He knows that his sight came from the one who is able to create eyes. So when he saw again. Hallelujah. When he saw again, he followed the voice now that he can see. That's why I oftentimes say it, that a person who has been born again cannot be outside of the assembly of the believers. No. Because it's not even something that you fight for. It's not, you don't fight for. Meaning, you don't have to... How do I explain that? The Bible said that I was glad when they told me, let us... Why, why, why was he glad? Is that because he doesn't have a house? <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that, is that because he cannot praise himself at his home? Are you what I'm saying? My point is, when Christ enters your heart, enters your mind, you love the things that comes from him. And immediately he received his sight and followed him. Imagine the guy. <laughs> he was in the neighborhood. And there was a, a girl he wanted to speak to, to marry. But the girl, he cannot see her. But he smells her. So he was thinking, I want to, I mean, he can, can smell the perfume of the lady. And then he's thinking in his mind, 
if I could only now have high sight and, you know, I will now see her, speak with her more, better, yada, yada. And now he received his sight. Imagine that the first thing that he does, oh, now I have my sight. I must go quickly to see the girl now. Well, guess what? It would have been bad. Are you what I'm saying? Because his sight was not to follow his desire. His sight was not to follow his lust. His sight was to follow who? Christ. The power God gives you, the gift God gives you, the anointing he gives you is to follow When what he gives you is now suited to serve you, you will serve your lust. Are you what I'm saying? That's why your sight comes in, you must make sure that you follow the altar of your sight. And at that point, you can glorify God. Because you cannot glorify God without following him. Hallelujah. It is in order. You get a sight, you follow him, then you glorify him. And all the people, which people? The same who told him, be quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same people who tried to get him out, be quiet. But you see, some people, they don't have faith. All they're looking for is to really see if what you're doing is real. I hear what I'm saying. The Bible said that the word is longing for the manifestations of the sons of God. There is a neighbor. All he's looking. You say you pray. You say you know God. <laughs> he's watching. Yeah. All he's waiting is to see your God. What are you going to do? You will preach, you will talk, you will share Bible verses. When you finish, the neighbor is sending like that. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you get out and then you start shouting, Oh Lord Jesus, I thank you. The neighbor will say, quiet. <laughs> uh, because all this noise is for what? But then, when the God you pray, Start now moving in a way that is unexpected. The neighbor sees it, and the Bible says, Start glorifying God. For it said, Let your light be. Hallelujah. Let your light shine, and let your good deed be seen of men, so that they may glorify your God in heaven. For him, the good deed that he has was to maintain faith. That was his good deed. His faith was his good deed. All he had was his faith. So you're thinking you don't have money to give to the poor. That's not the good deed he's asking of you. How do you demonstrate what you have inside in order to remain firm on the rock that you have trusted and believe? For your good deed shall be seen of all men and they shall glorify God. Even the atheist must know to say, he might be a God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even the unbeliever. Because remember, the atheist is not an atheist. He's a denier. Because he knows that he denies. For the Bible said, knowing the truth, they suppress it. So none of them does not know it. All of them know why. Because God created all of us. So they know, but they suppress it. But when the sparkling of the power of God manifested through your faith, start now moving, they can only recognize that indeed. That's the reason why, like the blind man, you must press. You must press. For the word says, they all told him, quiet, hold your peace. But when he heard it, then he multiplied and even 
cried out the louder. Even though nowadays you cried out the louder, they might give you a ticket <laughs> for, <laughs> for uh, you, that we say you went over the decibel. <laughs> but keep, keep crying more. Because at the end of the day, imagine. A police officer comes to arrest you because they say you are crying too loud. And when he comes, he has himself a blunt eye. So when he comes, he arrives. By the time he's arrested you, God touched him and his eye open. What do you think we'll be doing? So this is, a, I would call it, the handcuff. You turn the handcuff, sir, turn around. So by the time he put on the first one, and then you over there, oh, Lord Jesus, touch him. And he's open. Ah, ah, Jesus, Jesus, I did it, ah, ah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be a manifestation because it won't be like, oh, I can see. Oh, wow, I can see. No. He will be surprised. We saw it. With who? Peter and John, uh, I'm saying Peter and John, Paul and Silas. We saw it. The guard, he was a police officer of the Roman Empire. He was guarding them, and then he knew that uh, he was the power over them because they were the prisoner. And then the Bible said they start shouting and praising God at midnight. And suddenly there was a earthquake. And then and the door were open. The chains broken. Now imagine the guy with all his weapons. He's like. <laughs> 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 are, you, are, are you imagining the, the, the guy who's, who is over them. Who was lording over them. Now he sees the power of God. He said I'm a dead man. Now they're calling him. He runs and kneel down. What shall I do to be saved? Oh, this is what I'm talking about, Jesus Christ. This is what I'm talking about. I heard the testimony of a lady. She's from, she's from uh, Romania. A lady who has, in the time, uh, Romania or something, from on a, yeah, that lady, she was a woman, a, a child of God, a child of God. And she was always speaking of the weird things that the government then was doing. And by then, the president was a very di dictator. He, he would just kill you. And he, they, he made sure to ban anything that was Christian. And he, he was like, after them killing them, by the lady, she helped. And she was giving a testimony. And as she gave her testimony, she explained how she wrote a letter and sent to the embassy of the United States over there. So they took it and they gave it to President Ronald uh, Reagan. There you go. He was Reagan at the time. So when he received the letter and saw all the things that the, the president over there were doing, he, the president of the United States, with somebody that is unknown, it's just a, a, a simple lady comesal like that. But she wrote that letter. That letter made its way all the way to the decks of the president. And the president was moved by God to defend her. And to tell to the president of his country that if you touch her, you are finished. And now they took her out with an entire family. She came to the United States. And while she was in the United States, they sent a killer. An assassin. When the assassin came, he went to the church he's at. And now, when she went, he, he did like a, he wanted to talk with her. And she, he, they went together to the office, her office. When they arrived in, he took his weapon to shoot her. So when he takes the weapon, she speaks the word of God. The guys fall right there, start, start crying, and then confess, and then just give his life to Christ. <laughs> right there. So she wrote a book. What, what was the name? 
Yeah, what's the book she wrote? She wrote, her name is Virginia Pruden. Yeah. What? Saving my assassin. The guy who came with the weapon to kill her upon order of the president of his country. When he arrived to shoot her right there, the power of God hit her. Uh, I mean, hit him. When she was in a country, they took her in the jail. And they start beating her up bad. They beat her up so bad. Prior she came to the United States. They beat her so bad that they wanted her to deny Christ. They told her, all you have to do is to say no to Christ and then we leave you. And she said, uh-uh. So they beat her down. And one time she was being beat up so much that she started singing and praying for her uh, beaters. And there were four of them. Bodybuilding, builder. Imagine the big, big guys hitting, beating you. So the four of them, with all their rage, the more she was praying and then praying for them, the more they were rough, the more they were beating her. Shut up! And the more she was praying for them, and she entered the joy of the Lord. And at the moment of the time, they, they got beaten in there, they start crying. <laughs> she looked around, they all fell down, and they asked to receive Christ in their life. And then this lady, you look at her, she looks like, like nobody. All she had, it was like the blind man. The Bible says she had faith that she knew that I must not bind down. I must not let go. Because you see, for us it is easy to say, I will hold my faith. Until something comes and then you like, fall like a, <laughs> like a mango puri. What is a mango puri? <laughs> Ro rotted mango. Hallelujah. You have to hold your ground. Because let me tell you, the day, I said the day, that the enemy come to hit you, and you're not ready, you will fall. Like a mango puri. <laughs> rotted mango. Are you what I'm saying? That's why the word of God says we ought to be ready in and out of season. I have seen people who have their life turned around when they have heard what happened to our family. They were so shocked and they asked, how do you still continue to trust God? How do you still stand on the word of God? They were so shocked that they had to give their life to Christ. Are you what I'm saying? I did not preach to them. I did not speak to them. They witnessed it and they say, no, we must turn around. And one of them came all the way from Washington, D.C. to come get baptized. Are you what I'm saying? God uses you in a way that he expects you to continually follow him and to continually glorify him. Even if you don't see, keep shouting. Even if you don't see, keep shouting. And when the time arrives and then you see the fruit, the people around will also see just as you see and they will glorify God. But until then, God is working in your life. Don't take it lightly. Give me that last verse in uh, Amplify, and we will close. I mean, if we start from verse 40, uh, from the Amplify version. Yeah, verse 40 from the Amplify. Then Jesus stopped and ordered that the blind man be led to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me regain my sight. Jesus said unto him, regain your sight. Your personal trust and confident faith in me has made you well. 
immediately he regained his sight and began following Jesus, glorifying and praising and honoring God. And all the people, when they saw it, praised God. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, people of God. Some of the miracles you haven't received is for two reasons. One, the time is appointed. It hasn't arrived yet. Don't let go. The second reason is that God is gathering the witnesses around you. Because there are people who will see what God will do in your life. And they will change. You feel what I'm saying? So all you got to do is to keep on pressing because what God will do in your life will cause the unbeliever to believe. Remember, John 11. I told you once that what happened in the life in the family of Martha and Mary, there were trouble in the family so the neighbor can be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Bible says that when they call unto Jesus Christ to raise, no, I mean to heal Lazarus from the sick bed, he didn't come. And the people, by the time Lazarus died, they came crying, mourning. They were all the neighbor. Hallelujah. They were the neighbors. Because they didn't come from another city. Amen. And as they were crying, they saw Jesus coming, crying also. And they complained. They said, oh, see, he is crying now. Why he who opened the blind of the, uh, uh, and the eyes of the blind, who caused the lame to walk, why he did not heal? But now he's just crying. But the Lord knew. For he said before to go, he said the reason why I left the trouble arise is for the glory of God. Hallelujah. For the glory of God. So as you hold your faith, as you press on the faith in the Lord, it's not time to sit down. Tell to somebody, it is not time to sit down. Say, it is not time to sit down. And you are sitting down. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> Be prophetic. <laughs> you say you don't stand to sit down. You sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because see, if God does not do anything on this earth, there is one he will do. The Bible says he will stand and command you to come. There was a mass crowd. And in that mass crowd, he commanded only one to be brought to him. When that one was brought to him, he asked him just one question. Now I'm going to ask you the same question the Lord is asking because he's asking him through me. Hallelujah. Now you have only one answer. Amen. All your problems do not need to be enumerated. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have only one answer. Now, if you do not come with a need, that's not my fault. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will, need, you will wait for the next time. <laughs> but only one thing. The blind, he did not need money, but he was begging. Hallelujah. He could have said, Lord, give me a work. No. Lord, give me money. No. He knew he needed a key to unlock all his problem. If he can see, he can pray. If he can see, he can praise. If he can see, he can walk. If he can see, he can... Hallelujah. He could not see he was begging, but he had something inside that he needed. And what he needed, it was the most important above all. He himself, if he cannot see, cannot lead his children, can he? Hallelujah. Will he be able to take his child to say, okay, let's go to the, <laughs> the temple? No. So all he needed, well, listen, there are times what you need is not about your family. Listen, let me tell you something. 
We're talking about the blind man. Amen? In that revelation of the blind man, God is not asking what you need for your child, for your great, your great father. No, he's asking what you need in your life. Because there is something in your life that you need in order for you to be able to help others. For it says, if you don't remove the, no, no, the beam, big one, that is in your eye. You cannot remove the plank that is in the eye of your brother. So whatever that you need, that is for you. Whether you're watching or whether you're watching after. The word is spirit and life. The life that is contained in that word, say it. Give me verse 42. Now, no, 41, sorry. Verse 41. Now, the Lord Jesus comes. Now, I'm going to speak that word. When I speak that word, when I speak the question of that word as being the mouth of the Lord, all you we have to do is to answer the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 40, um, 18, verse 41. The Lord Jesus now comes to you. Saying, what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> what do you want me to do for you? What do you want? Me, Jesus Christ, the Lord, sons of David, savior, healer, deliverer, restorer, to do for you now. Now receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. I say receive in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for your work that you do right now in the life of your children. I bless you, Lord Jesus, for the work that you're doing right now in the life of your children. I bless you, Lord God, for the power, for the healing, for the restoration, for the deliverance, for the transformation, for the restoration, for the deliverance, for the transformation, for the healing, Lord God, for the elevation. Lord God, thank you for opening the eyes. Thank you for opening the ears. Thank you, Lord God, for causing the lamb to walk. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for causing the barren to be able to beg. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for causing the spirit to rise again. Thank you, Lord God, for the life of faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the life of faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the life of faith. Thank you, Lord God, for providing faith, for providing wisdom, for providing knowledge. Thank you, Jesus, for providing fire, for providing power. Thank you, God, for providing authority. Thank you, God, for providing authority, understanding and wisdom, sight and insight. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. For it is the Lord God Almighty who's wondrous in the work that he does. 
and he has appointed and called you today so that he may pick you up so that he may pick you up for where you are he gonna pick you up for where you are he gonna pick you up he says i seen you i have heard you and i'm picking you up he said do no longer stay in the place that you were for i am changing the story of your name of your birth of your life i'm changing the things of your conception and i'm decreeing over your life a new chapter that chapter will be written by my spirit that chapter will be written by my power that chapter will be written by my hand for the finger of God shall do it for the hand of God shall do it and the things that were no longer will come back to life and you shall see my hand as never before I cause you to rise I cause you to stand I cause you to speak I cause you to prophesy for I see and I speak it. Abadiri ribo shota rabah. 